All right, now we move into another subsection of this clean melody. You can tell something different's happening here. What a lovely chord that is. All right, so for this, it's the seventh fret of the A string. We're still in octaves. Pick it twice, slide down to the fifth fret, and all the way down to the second fret. And now back up to the fifth fret. And then that final part there, fifth, slide to the second, pick the second again, slide up to the third. So you go up. And chord of the week there. Um, that's just a C power chord. That's the third fret of the A, fifth fret on the middle two strings, but arch your index finger so that you can hear the top two strings ringing out open. And while we've got that chord, we might as well enjoy it. So uh, we now arpeggiate it as a little bit of a fill near the bridge again. So that's just A string, D string, top E, B, and G. And to start the next bar, you slide up here, third fret to fifth fret on the A string. And now, while no one's looking, sneak up another two frets. And pick that shape on the D and B strings twice and slide down two frets. And now back here, seventh fret again. This time you slide up two frets. Back to the seventh, fifth, and now fifth on the A and G strings. Rounding it off with um, seventh on the D, sliding up a tone. Um, so from there we've got... About time for another Hendrixy fill, I think, and here it is. Um, so once again, based on that seventh fret, minor seventh shape, and the actual notes here are E string, seventh fret, hammer on at the tenth, pull off, and now you go to the G and B strings. Just hammer on on the B string, let the G string ring through. So it's hammering onto the tenth and pulling off again. And then this shape here, just slide up, and as you slide up from here, you're aiming for this shape, a minor ninth. So that's a bar at the twelfth fret from the D string all the way towards the floor, adding your third finger on the fourteenth fret. So you pluck that and cut it off. So that section, one more time. And Now back to some octave shapes. Another great chord. Uh, so for this part, it's a start of the seventh fret on the A string. Pick it twice, slide down two frets, and down another three, and pick it again. And then slide up back to the fifth fret, cut it off, pick it two more times and slide down there again. And basically what we're looking forward to is this chord here. Uh, two ways you can play that. That's the more sensible way. Uh, fifth fret on the A, seventh on the D, fifth on the G, and these two open. If you're naturally lazy like me, you might prefer that way, where you're kind of barring with the first joint of your index finger, but then folding the rest of it away from the strings. Everyone's fingers are different. Some people enjoy doing that, some people don't. So take your pick there. That's the more technically correct fingering. Anyway, after that, we move up to a little bluesy fill there. I think it's probably easiest to learn this just as a single note fill and then thicken it out. So basically what you need is the G string at the 12th fret. Bend it up a bit, let it down, and then pull off to the 10th fret and now slide up two frets from there. Repick and up to the twelfth. Down again. 
and end with this chromatic 12, 11, 10 mm. movement on the D string. Now, if you kind of bar your fingers around that melody and be a little bit more reckless about which notes you pick, you get... Which, hopefully, you'll agree, sounds more like what's on the record. Um, the hardest bit about that is probably... Uh, knowing how to bend with a bar, trying to bend all three of those strings. It's best not to think about it too hard, you just go for it, so long as you hear some kind of bending effect there the lick should come out sounding authentic. Uh, time for some more octaves now. Uh, back to the D string set. Uh, seventh fret. Slide down to. And repeat. So for that bar you've got. And for the start of the next bar, where the C chord comes in, um, Basically that melody, um, so 7th fret on the D, slide up to, cut off, all the way down to the 5th fret, 7th fret there, move on to the A string, and for your last trick, D string at the 5th fret. And now for some fun with harmonics. So what we're doing there is uh, just resting that index finger lightly over the top four strings and uh, just doing a little raking motion with the picking hand. Rounding it off with a 14th fret real note, not a harmonic, on the A string. Sliding up, barely audible on the recording, but it is there. 14th fret up to the 15th fret. So just for the, the sake of timing, let's check that whole section again. Uh, And now for a strange jazz lick. Um, if anyone's interested, this is the F Lydian dominant mode. The sort, of, the sort of scale you might use over the Simpsons chord. And... Uh, so perhaps these are not the most normal notes if you've been brought up on a diet of rock. But um, what we've got here, we start on the A string, fifth fret. And then fifth fret again, sixth, eighth. And now we jump straight onto the G string set of octaves. Eh? And that's the, the eighth fret again. But this time your little finger's reaching as far out as the 11. And you round it off with a slide up to the nine on the D string and back down to the seven. So that whole lick again. Now when the chord changes again, I think we have an F sharp minor seven, as I recall. Um, that's a simple melody, just climbing up the D string. Nine, il nine again, 11, 12, and now slide from where you are up to the 14. And for no apparent reason, he now moves right down here. You hear those two open strings the top two, and the second fret on the G. Now back to the octaves up here. So that melody there starts on the D string, 9, 9, 11, 12. And now move on to the G string, 12 and quickly slide up to 14. Back to 12, finally 11, then a little gap and end the bar at the ninth fret. So that whole bar would be two, three, four. Okay, and one final tricky thing in this little segment. You hold that octave, pick it again, and try and bend it up a semitone and release it. Now you slide down and now bring it back up. So on the G string alone, it would be... And when you bring the octave in, you... It might feel a little funny at first, so long as you lock those two fingers in shape, you should be okay. 
and now for a, a lot of jazz chords in a very short space of time. So what we have there, um, you bar your first finger at the D string all the way down, add your middle finger at the 15th fret on the B and your little finger 17th fret on the E. So you slide up to that, that's your first chord. Then this one, which is a bar from the G string all the way down at the 12th fret, your middle finger adding the 14th fret note. So Now down again, that's 9 on the G, 10 on the B, 12 on the E. Then the same shape again, two frets lower. Now we move on to the D string, 9th fret bar, over the two middle strings with your little finger at the 12th fret there. Uh, so you play that shape, move it down to, slide up, back to where you were, and then end just by hitting a ninth fret bar from the A down to the G strings. Um, and that's the end of the first melody section.